I am delighted to be here today at GTT Audio, and I want to introduce everyone. If you haven't met him yet, you will right now. Bill Parrish from GTT. Thank you, Peter. Bill Parrish is one of the best audio distributors in the world today. Bill Parrish has been awarded the distribution of Mola Mola for the North American market, and I want to congratulate you for that. Well, thank you. It's great to have you here today. It's great to be here, and it's great to actually see these and hear these, and we will listen to them. And that's what this is all about. So they're compact looking, but they're big sounding. And this is what a lot of people want. Not everybody can put giant amplifiers in their homes, can they? No, and these are very powerful. They can drive anything. The, the Kaluga monoamps, as they're called, mm -hmm. 400 watts in the 8 ohms, mm -hmm. 700 in the 4 ohms, 1.2 kilowatts in the 2 ohms. So there's not a speaker out there they can't drive. That's a lot. And drive it well. That's a lot of power. It is. Now, who are they designed by? Bruno Putzis. Now, folks, if you have been watching the videos, Bruno Putzis, let's give a little background on Bruno. So Bruno, when working at Philips Corporation, invented UCD, which is Universal Class D. And then Hypex got the license, Jan Peter mm -hmm. at Hypex got the license to produce UCD and has built an entire business building Class D amplifiers by the UCD design of Bruno Putzis. So what we're going to be listening to in these products here are designed by one of the smartest electronic engineers in the world. Yes. Well, so Bruno um, was an employee then. He left Philips Corporation and became an employee of Hypex Corporation. Mm -hmm. And Jan Peter and Bruno's always looking to expand his designs and take them further. Mm -hmm. And he and Jan Peter got together. And at that point in time, Bruno invented what he called Encore. 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 Like That's the letter N hyphen core. core. No, just all together. All together, okay. Encore. Okay. And that is really a evolution of UCD. Okay. It's UCD to the next level. Mm -hmm. And Jan Peter and uh, Bruno got together formed a corporation because they thought Encore was so special to bring it out in a uh, commercial fashion to audiophiles and Mola Mola is the answer to that. Well, there we go. Well, viewers, let's take a closer look at the Mola Mola line. So here we go. Mola Mola. Now let me show you the Kaluga amp. It's about eight inches wide, four inches tall, and a foot deep. This little guy can fit anywhere. And as we already mentioned, it's extremely powerful. As far as connectivity, we have two sets of Frutec binding posts. So it's very easy to buy wire, which is how we have the Haley's hooked up in this room. You can have an XLR input, an RCA input, It'll accept any type of power cord. There's also a DC 12 volt trigger that can come from the preamp or an AV receiver or AV uh, processor to turn the unit on and off. Inside, it's made with the, with the best parts. This is not your standard end core that you can buy off the shelf. But uh, Bruno has rolled something special for his products. Using Kabbalah Sosna speaker cable direct right from the board directly to the binding post. A custom power supply and input board. The Kaluga is a no compromise Class D design. Let's take another closer look at that from the inside. Can you bring it a little bit closer, Bill, please? I can. Let me show you a closer look of what we just talked about. Kabbalah Sosna speaker cable directly connected to the Encore board, to the Frutec binding post, a special custom input board, 
and a custom power supply exclusive to the Kaluga. You're not going to find this in the do-it-yourself off-the-shelf parts list. That's a very impressive looking unit. I want everyone to see. Yeah, you can definitely see that it's uh, it's chock full of parts here. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not this empty little uh, chip amp. It was the name that people were describing Class D with. And another important thing about Class D is there is no digital circuitry in this amplifier whatsoever. Nowhere can you measure digital. This is a pure analog amplifier. A lot of times people think that D stands for digital. That's not the case. There was a Class A amp, there was a Class B amp, there was a Class C amp. D was literally the next letter in the alphabet. How about that? How many products are in the Molomola line? Well, there's two main products. There's the Kaluga mono amps, there's the Makua preamp, and then the preamplifier has a DAC board that can be inputted and a and a optional phono stage. Can we take a look at those next? Absolutely. Okay, here we go. And Bill, why don't you tell us about the Makua? Peter, the Makua is an amazing preamplifier. In its line stage mode, it has a signal-to-noise ratio of minus 130 dB. That is quiet. It's very, very quiet. Very quiet. Now let me take it here and show you. On each input, it's your choice of a true balanced or RCA input. Balanced RCA. There's five different uh, line options. Mm -hmm. Over here is a slot for the DAC. Mm -hmm. The DAC is unbelievably good. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it when when the card's in there, you have your choice of USB, of RCA SPDIF, or an Ethernet RJ45 jack that'll do DNLA or Rune. Wow, that's very very versatile. It is a DSD DAC. Okay. It'll do all the DSD formats. Okay. It's a DXD DAC. It'll do uh, up to 32 384. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, PW, PWM DAC. What's that mean? Pulse width modulation. Mm -hmm. It is the only PWM DAC in the world. Inside, the DAC is discrete. It's not a chip DAC. Okay. This is not an off-the-shelf DAC. This is custom done by Bruno Putzies. Mm -hmm. It, like a FPGA, the field programmable gate arrays that are out there now, like a PS Audio does, mm -hmm. um, Playback Designs, mm -hmm. they do it. There's quite a few on the market. This is the new thing. It's a great thing. You can flash it with uh, software and you have a whole new deck. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a chip that you program, you load, and it's out there. So it's effectively obsolete proof? It's obsolete proof. Well, Bruno's P PWM DAC is exactly the same thing. Flash mm -hmm. it with new firmware, it mm -hmm. becomes a new DAC. Mm -hmm. So you're not, if he comes out with something new, it's not a hardware change, it's a firmware change, mm -hmm. and now you do it. So all the new formats are protected. How about that? This has a phono stage in it. This one's uh, fitted with the optional phono stage. That is in this, this is part of the chassis over here? Well, the, the phono stage is an actual board. Oh, it's a board? It's okay. A, it's a Got board it. in there. Okay. And it is a, a um, moving magnet and moving coil. Mm -hmm. It's not a moving magnet on top of a moving coil, but two separate mm -hmm. moving magnet or moving coil. Mm -hmm. the, the beauty of this is any one of these inputs can route through the phono stage. Oh. But it even gets more interesting. <laughs> like it that. even gets more interesting. For those people out there that have two tone arms mm -hmm. on a table, or let's say three or four, 
or even if they had five I know on different tables. Yeah, we have a, a reviewer in Asia uh, who has multitudes of turntables. I think he's going to die for this. Each one of these inputs, whether it be RCA or XLR, can route through the phono stage. Mm -hmm. Each input is independently configurable. So essentially you have five different in, uh, phono stages right here. So you each could one, set loading one, different for you each can one? Set, each input can have a different loading, a different gain, I'll be damned. and a different RIAA curve. How heavy is it? Can I pick it up? Sure, go ahead. Oh, there's some weight to it, viewers, I'll tell you. About 25 pounds, yeah. 30 pounds, yeah. something like that. And I also want to get it a little closer so you can see it. The fit and finish is impeccable. No, it's really second. I mean, it is it's just second totally to impeccable. Here. Yeah. I mean, his Mola Mola is the largest fish in the ocean. So it's, you know, this big fish that he named. This big fish in the sea, he named these compact components that perform so well. Mm -hmm. And Kaluga and Makua are also fish in the ocean. How about that? The, the volume control is really cool. There's a little fiber optic LED when it's plugged in. When it operates, it illuminates, lets you know where it is, mm -hmm. and then shuts off when it hasn't been touched. And then you have the different input buttons. There's six of them. Mm -hmm. You press, uh, you press the input that's active, it becomes mute. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about the phono section and, you know, and the DAC. And I mean, this is a pre-amplifier. You know, a lot of people like to go DAC direct, and I've never heard a DAC going direct that sounds better than a pre-amplifier in there. But this is a real pre-amplifier with a real DAC. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my tests I like to do for the viewers is I love to spin the knob because I get a feel of the quality of the product by doing so. And this has, some knobs are real smooth, this there's a little bit of, you can feel some real quality, there's a little bit of, how can I put it, a slight resistance. Yeah, feedback. Feedback. So you're getting this touch feel feedback. It is extremely fine. It's like Gosh, I, I would say uh, German engineering, but it is, it's, it's beyond that. It, uh, each input, you can choose to have, uh, for like a home theater bypass, have unity gain straight out of it. Mm -hmm. That takes the volume control out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And so if you had five turntables or multiple turntables, but you had a, say, a tube preamplifier that you were in love with and you wanted to go through that, but you needed an excellent phono stage to handle four or five arms, mm -hmm. you could use this as well mm -hmm. and not use the volume control. Just take unity gain out of there and use it as a phono stage. Mm -hmm. It's pretty special. There's an app with it. You can control the volume. Mm -hmm. You hear one on the shelf actually operating. There's mute. You can change the different inputs. Mm -hmm. We scroll. Well, we can scroll this way, and you can do a balance control left and right. Mm -hmm. it tells you your firmware version. It'll update the firmware version in the unit. Mm -hmm. You can select RCA XLR or let the little toggle switches on the back of the preamp do it. Do it do for it you. For you. Yeah. You can, t you can enable each input, disable each input, you can name each input. Mm -hmm. There's four remote triggers, DC 12-volt uh, triggers on the back. You can choose if you want them active or not. Mm -hmm. Now the phono stage. This phono stage has, we've heard of these preamplifiers that allow for adjustable Cur equalization curves where RIAA is the standard and mm -hmm. then there's other pre-1970 there were other each studio had its own curve this unit has 72 different curves 
and you can control it and easily get it right from this app. Wow. Let me show you here. You just click on that and you can scroll through the different curves. Mm -hmm. it's, as matter, it's as quick and easy as touching a button. Mm -hmm. Go back to RIAA. Mm -hmm. You can check, you know, for each input the resistance, the capacitance, and the gain. Mm -hmm. It's got 87 dB a gain. That's a lot of gain. That's a lot of gain. What and, that means is it'll drive a low output moving coil uh, under a, a 0.3 or down as low as 0.2. Yeah. That amount of gain. Yeah. That's a lot of gain, viewers. As far as the noise on the phono stage. This is unheard of. It is quieter than the inherent noise of any cartridge. So the cartridge God. hanging on the end of the arm is going to be noisier than the phono circuit. Do you have a spare one of these I can put in my trunk? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you may need to review that. <laughs> This is a quite special unit with all these changes and all these different inputs uh, on the phono section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would think it'd be a digital, right? Yeah, you would. No, it's all done in the analog domain. I'll be darned. It's Bluetooth over to the unit, okay. and then when you do that, it switches in and out resistors and capacitors. Mm -hmm. All that math is done via analog. Viewers, I think this might be the most sophisticated audio product I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, and it's extremely compact. Right. It's extremely compact. This, which is five inches tall, and the Kalugas, again, five inches tall, mm -hmm. and put it on two shelves mm -hmm. in an audio rack. Mm -hmm. Or in a lifestyle system, mm -hmm. put them on top of a credenza. Mm -hmm. Put them on each side. Oh, I see, yeah. Does not take up that much room. It's absolutely compact, gorgeous to look at, mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous sounding. One of Bruno's philosophies is to not let the signal be altered in any way. Mm -hmm. And I think he's really achieved it with these products. What goes in comes out. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You feed it the right signal, and if it puts out that same signal, that's the goal. So that's the case, mm -hmm. whether it's you're using it in line stage mode with an external CD player, mm -hmm. if you're going to use it in phono mode, like a Kronos turntable, mm -hmm. or if you're going to use a streamer, mm -hmm. like we use the Oralic Aries DAC directly mm -hmm. into it. You could also take a, a computer directly into it. Mm -hmm. But all three sections are extremely transparent mm -hmm. and true to the source. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll say again, the fit and finish is just beautiful. It's, again, you have to see it in person, uh, the way the machining is here on the left and on the right. It has a flow to it. It's almost like the ocean, in a way. Yeah, it's a wave. It's a wave. And when you... Uh, when it's in front of you, you just want to touch it. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice looking products. So this has to be one of the most desirable audio products I've ever seen, as I said before. Um, are these available today? Oh, absolutely. Everything's shipping. Outstanding. And we keep them in stock as well. Outstanding. Outstanding. So theoretically, a client could order them today and be enjoy enjoying them tomorrow in their room. No, uh -huh, but we have we have a we have a dealer network. Uh, we drop ship. Mm -hmm. We can supply throughout the U.S. and Canada. They're Thank gorgeous you. to look at, and the best part of any video is what do they sound like? Can we listen next? We can. Let me just add, and I think you remember this from a previous video. The Bruno Putzies came here to this room. And voice these products there you on, go. on YG speakers. There you go. So let's let's hear what he heard, what I heard, and Mr. Kabbalah was involved as well. And that's Joe Kabbalah from Kabbalah Sosna. Well, great. Excellent. Let's do some listening. Here we go.
the best part of it is listening to music. Bill, what we have here is a test pressing of Sera Una Noche. The track we'll play is Nublado. This is a Todd Garfinkel recording. This is still available in vinyl. We're going to play it on the Cronus Sparta turntable. And what's the cartridge we'll be using? It's the Airtight Supreme. That's as good as it gets, folks. You guys ready to listen? Because we are. Yep. Let's do, do it. it. Here we go. Was that beautiful or was that beautiful? That was beautiful. These are YG Haley loudspeakers, everyone. We are a GTT audio. We just heard one of the most beautiful recordings in the world on Mola Mola equipment. And I want to thank you for this demonstration because it's a true pleasure to hear one of the most cutting edge products available in the world today. Well, thank you for taking your time to come up and give it a listen. Good. Well, thanks a lot. Bill, again, good. thanks. Have a good day. Take care.